G'day everyone and welcome to another episode of Automotive Carnage. Today we're going to do the third part in our RX3 series and uh, today we're going to go about making this thing look a little bit nicer. So join us after the intro. So as you saw from last week, we went through the whole car, we spotted all the rust we could, we cleaned up the interior, found a bit more rust in the floor there. But overall, for a vehicle that's been sitting for gosh knows how long and open to the elements, it is in really good shape. We do have a few dents and blemishes up here at the front on the nose cone, but nothing that an experienced panel beater cannot fix. So today, we're going to go around and just make it look like a bit more of a complete car. We'll take the rest of the glass out so it's a bit safer to put our hands on. We're going to pop out as many of these dents as we can uh, in the doors. We've already taken a couple out and uh, put a few reflectors in. We've got a bonnet to put on there as well. It's going to end up looking really, really nice. So the first thing you'll notice though is that the car is now on the ground and it has a new set of wheels. So let's show you those. All right, so here we are. Mazza, the Bush Dorito, as it's become known around here, is sitting pretty on wheels for the first time in its life in a very long time. So we've found some absolutely awesome 13-inch Javette wheels. Um, did the old Facebook Marketplace walk around and uh, found these for sale. Um, bloke Steve had them, who uh, is actually a viewer of the channel. So thank you very much, Steve, uh, for sending us these wheels and getting them sent to us on such an awesome, timely matter. So because of that, we're able to get this thing on the ground sitting really really nicely um yeah well it was a little bit in suspension but well, this little work still uh all the brakes have been freed up we did have a bit of trouble with this one um we had to it will no not that one sorry the back one the back one we had to take the wheel off it and um give a few whacks of the the hammer on the drum so that it will actually spin and rotate and so yeah it is a complete roller now let's see there you go, and if she's light enough, I can pull it with one hand. So, really cool. So yeah, today we're gonna pop all these dents out of the doors. So we're gonna take off the interior trims so that we can get to the inside. We'll see what the mechanisms on the locks are like. Oh, that's right, because we've gotta see if we can get these doors to open. They're currently stuck. So once we pull the covers off the inside, we'll be able to sort something out there. Remove the glass, put our new bonnet on. We're gonna to have to do a bit of panel beating around here uh, so that it can sit nice and flush and get the correct body lines. Um, yeah, oh yeah, and that's right, and then we've got reflectors and indicators to fill in these holes, so it's gonna look pretty well complete by the time we are done. What do you reckon, dog? Don't care. All right then, let's get into it. There we have it, that's the driver's side door done. Uh, our back panel beating, nothing but a hammer and a pry bar, and we've popped all those dents out. So from a distance, it looks okay, but obviously if you get closer, it's a bit wavy. It's definitely not perfect, but we're not looking for perfect, we're just looking for awesome. And then we've got my young apprentice over here, she's helping clean all the glass out. She's got gloves on, so she's all good. Doing a wonderful job too. Oh, that's a bit exhausting. Um, all the glass is almost out, so. Doing fantastic there, so I'm going to keep moving on and we'll just time lapse the last couple of doors and then we'll get on to that boot. And here is where we're at now. Now I am by no means an actual panel beater, any standards, but this will be good enough for Outback standards. So we've got all those dents out. I've kind of creased the sheet metal in a few places, which is a little bit, yeah, whoops. 
but uh, we get a lot more of a general shape and it's looking a lot nicer overall and then down this side so these doors if you remember from last week were um, shut I couldn't wasn't able to open them but now oh look at that smooth air so bit of WD down in there this one um, the mechanism lock mechanism in here um, where is it down there somewhere up in there that was all just gummed up a little bit so that wasn't too hard to fix and then as for the back door here the seat belt See, I saw a crumple up the seat, but was stuck and jammed in there as well. So, took a little bit of force and we managed to get that as well. But now they work wonderfully. So, we'll put the trims back on the inside in here, and then that is our dents sorted. I, I can't do this, this is too much damage. Um, I do not have the expertise to bring it out that far. That's that's quite a lot. We gave it a good bashing as you saw in the hyperlapse, um, but it wasn't good enough. So yeah, unfortunately that panel may have to be replaced with a brand new uh, panel, but you can get that entire rear section for like 600 bucks. So that's not too bad. Um, so now we're gonna go ahead and put all our new panels on. So we've got the reflectors back there. We've got the indicators up here. We'll try trial fit our bonnet, um, smash that dent there back a little bit. So hopefully we'll be able to get a nice flush fitment. Hopefully that is pretty mangled up there. Um, I'm not going to worry about trying to bend any of this because that portion is too valuable. I'll let a professional tackle that one. And it gives a bit of character at the moment anyway. So let's put our new panels on. And I'm excited. This thing's going to look pretty cool by the time we're finished with it. Okay, so I've bashed and played with this um, front line here as much as I can. Um, and I've made just enough room to hopefully get this bonnet on and closed. Uh, our hinges are freely-ish moving. That one's a bit stiff, but that's okay. And then here is our bonnet. Now, this sucker was the cheapest one I could find. That was 440 bucks. Um, and it, it's crazy. It's just, it's scratched. It's bent from where someone's tried closing it with seized hinges. Um, it, the two skins, the top skin, and the reinforcing underneath has all separated. Um, it's got rust in it. <sighs> Master parts, it's very expensive. But anyway, it's going to serve our purpose. And I love that it's black. I think the black with the blue and the gold wheels is going to look rather nice. So I've already sprayed a bit of WD in there. Got some uh, random bolts we found in the bolt collection that will fit. Well, at least I hope they will fit. Hopefully they're not too long. Get that one in. All right. And then over this side, this bonnet used to be red. I dare say it's been through a few color changes. Put my bonnet. Oh, uh, bolts. Oh. Should have brought my spanner over. That would have been a good idea. All right, we're back. And we have, we don't have a spanner. We have our ratchet, ratchet and socket. Oh, put that the right way. Alrighty, that's them tight. Let's see what happens. Ah, bugger. Well, it closes, but I don't think I'm going to be able to open it again. It's jammed in here and over here. How does this line up? Yeah, it needs to come this way anyway. All right. Okay, take two. Yeah, it's scraping. That's all right. Man, it is so out of whack along here. It's incredible. Okay, and then that's it. There we go. That's as good as it's going to get. Let me bring you closer. So, talking about panel gap, that's pretty mighty. Now what's happened as well, is the uh, latch on the actual bonnet is bent that way, uh, forcing the bonnet to overhang onto the cowl ever so slightly. Um, but for all intents and purposes, we just want to get a bonnet on it so that we have a complete panel. Um, you can see here it's been scraping paint there where it rubs against the nose cone there and along here as well. But, mate, look at that. 
that's huge. That's going to take quite a bit of time to realign the front of this car. And we might need to still adjust it a little bit more. That is good for now. Uh, unfortunately, I left those at work, so I can't put them on. So our next job is just get our dash back in place. And well, there we have it guys. The RX3 is complete for the time being. We've got our beautiful 13 inch Chevette wheels on there. We've popped all the dents out of the side as best as we can for a ball paint hammer and a pry bar. We've put our dash and our interior pieces in, at least all the bits we could find lying around this vehicle. We've even got and sourced ourselves some rear reflectors and some front indicators along with the best bonnet that I could find for a good price. So, <laughs> We're out here again in the beautiful Australian Outback, not too far away from where we actually found this vehicle in the first place, but there's an awesome little graveyard here of other vehicles. And I thought I'd bring you here to explain to you what the next step is for this vehicle. So in the last video, I asked you guys, what should we do? It is an absolutely amazing find. It is by far the best bushwreck that I have found to date. And it's the one that's given me the most emotional struggle, whether I keep it, or do we move on to the next person who can actually do it some justice? And I'd say a good 90% of the comments were keep it, restore it, put it back to original, put a big 13B bridge port in, um, proverbial port in there. So many awesome suggestions, and I thank you guys so much for that. However, as hard as it is to say, I cannot keep this car. I would love, love, to keep this vehicle but i know that i would not do it justice and there are other people out there who have reached out and explained to me how they would go about restoring it and one guy in particular hit the nail on the head exactly how this car should be restored and maintain its story it's not going to be factory restored it's going to be patinaed it's going to have a 10a back in it and it's going to have the interior put back in so it's usable. Yes, I can hear you all screaming in the comments. I can hear you screaming from around the world right now that I should keep it. But honestly, I've got so many other cars working on it at the moment. And I don't want to be one of these guys who collects a whole bunch of cars and goes, it's not for sale. No, no, I'm going to restore that one day. They are my pet peeve. Like the vehicle is literally rusting away in people's backyards and they will not release it i understand if it's got sentimental value where a, a family member's passed away and it's the last connection they have those sort of situations completely understand but when you've got 20 30 vehicles literally rusting in the backyard similar to this come on guys so i do not want to be one of those people so we're going to move it on to someone who can do it some justice so who does it go into you might ask and the awesome thing is i can actually reveal that to you and majority of you people who have recently subscribed to my channel thank you very much for joining um will actually know this character because he has a very i would consider a very viral video that's gone around recently where he goes and puts a 13b rotary into a vn commodore <laughs> Yes, that's right. It is going to Jay of the Low Standards YouTube channel, who is well known in South Australia for just making the most 
amazing contraptions of the vehicles. Um, he reached out to me, told me his plan of the vehicle, and I'm like, you know what? You're more bold and brave than I am, because I was going to cut the rust out of it. He ain't. <laughs> how it is, is how he's going to try to get it registered. So I know sending it to him in Adelaide, this car is going to get the love it deserves. In fact, he actually has every single part that he needs um, to put this car back together how we intend it to work. So it's, it's very... It's unfortunate that I have to let it go, but it is going to the best person around that I could think of to um, to give it to. So it's going to live on in South Australia for now. And you never know, one of the clauses of him getting the vehicle was that once he's all done with it, I'll have first option to buy it back off him. So I might get a vehicle back, you never know, but it's going to be awesome regardless when he finishes it. So there we have it guys, that is the conclusion of the RX3 in my hands. We found it, we gave it a good clean, we found all the rust in it, we gave it a bush restore and it is now moving on to an absolutely amazing person. So thank you all for watching, thank you all for viewing and subscribing, this has been the best month uh, for my channel. So thank you so much to all like the 1000 new subscribers I've got recently. Um, I hope we find more vehicles and do more projects that you will stay and enjoy the journey with us. So again, thank you very much for watching Automotive Carnage and we'll catch you on the next one. See you later.